let's talk about radio sans. So uh, here we have the one that I recovered this morning that launched from the National Weather Service in Albany, New York. Uh, here it is before I snatched it out of the tree with a uh, pole saw and uh, we had permission to uh, go into uh, these nice people's backyard uh, to grab this. So you could see that uh, the line uh, dropped down pretty far and uh, it was easy to, to snatch it out of the tree. So uh, we'll talk about uh, how to track these uh, balloon transmitters and uh, how they work. So every day, two balloons are launched from over 90 locations around the United States. You can see where those uh, locations are uh, here on the map and you can learn more about this i'm just going to skip through this pretty high level with the, the the how and the why and everything like that um, but it's very easy to uh, set up your own receiver using nothing more than an inexpensive uh, sdr dongle and an antenna suitable for the 400 to 406 megahertz uh, receiver range so you could uh, go ahead and visit us uh, weather.gov upper air or you could also go directly to the URLs that you will see on the actual radio sound itself. So how do we actually receive uh, radio sounds? So you could take a Raspberry Pi connected to an SDR and uh, install the Auto RX application, uh, which is uh, what we're looking at right now. And uh, there are no balloons real time being received but uh, we'll go back and take a look at the historical uh, reception of uh, my receiver that I have set up at my home. So we can go and we could click in a bunch of these if you just want to get an idea uh, on just overall range. I'll just click off the last few uh, launches over the past couple of days and hit the uh, plot paths and uh, I'll explain this. So the, uh, the green uh, target is uh, the first signal that's received by my station. And then the blue line is the path uh, that the balloon traveled. The little um, explosion mark is where the balloon uh, reached its burst altitude before it started to descend. So here we have one that got up to uh, 102,000 feet uh, before it started to descend. And then the last known position received by my station is reflected at the uh, the red uh, target. And so this one right here is the one that I captured uh, just this morning. And this was my first time doing that. It was also pretty cool uh, that uh, Bill Casey 2 SWAO uh, joined in uh, at the last minute. So it was good to have a, uh, a sidekick with me to, uh, to retrieve this. So uh, this is uh, this is the Auto RX, and you can see the scattered path I had predicted uh, last night that uh, the evening and the morning launch should drift south. That's the way that things have been trending lately. Most of them uh, go out towards the east, but lately they've been trending south. And so I thought uh, today being Saturday is a perfect day to retrieve it. And so uh, we could see the path. It was picked up up over here, went up to its uh, max altitude before it popped, but after it circled around, so you could see it kind of caught a thermal draft over here, circled around, and then ultimately settled back down here into uh, somebody's uh, backyard. So it was uh, not, this is not the actual location that it landed in. This is just where my receiver had uh, last picked it up. And so now if we head over to the uh, sondhub.org website, um, we can see all the receivers in the area. So this blue icon uh, with the little green dot under it, that's uh, my receiver. And um, between myself and uh, the W1VLF uh, receiver in Connecticut, as well as the WJ2B on Long Island, uh, during the course of the morning, uh, it was easily trackable across all three of our locations, but uh, W1VLF um, was able to get it down uh, further than me. I think I last picked it up somewhere up here. He got it over here, 
uh, and we were getting telemetry received uh, from these uh, receivers uh, down to about 400 feet. And so there's all sorts of uh, analytics that you can look at. So we'll click into plots, show you some of the, the data here, and then we'll get into the inside of the SON. So the SON transmits its uh, temperature and uh, battery voltage as well as its location so we could see uh, the time and against altitude ascent and descent rate against time horizontal vertical uh, how many satellites were received the gps constellation and then uh, all of the different uh, receiver stations in the area and what's the strength of the signal so my receiver is N2 HVD represented by the uh, pink line and uh, Joe WJ2B is this green line over here and then we also have W1 VLF is the, uh, the red line so we can see that uh, his uh, receiver setup was extremely helpful this morning uh, he received a total of uh, 6300 packets uh, I received uh, 3,100, and Joe received uh, 5,200, and a bunch of others that also uh, picked up this uh, this on. So this was a really good launch. A uh, battery voltage stayed uh, pretty consistent, uh, which is important. Uh, frequency stability was pretty stable. Signal reports were pretty solid. So overall, this was a, a really great first time uh, experience to go and actually track one of these down. So. I was using the SONTUB app on my phone, as well as another device, which we'll cover in a, another video for receiving it um, when we got a little bit closer, uh, where uh, it made it uh, a lot easier to uh, actually find a balloon. So let's go actually take a look at the radio sound that was retrieved this morning and uh, what it looks like and how it works. Well, this is my first recovered radio sonde, and we'll do a little bit of a tear down here, but uh, let's go through the, uh, the outside here. So, in a way, a logo, harmless weather instrument with the website. Uh, it's worth pointing out that this is not to be returned to the National Weather Service, so that gives me permission to uh, explore the inside and uh, look to reprogram this for other use so that's uh, fun so that's the I guess we'll call that the front the side have harmless weather instrument with the website to learn more information the same on the other side the back is the model number and serial number made by Gra. this is a DFM 17 and then you have the uh, the unit status and then the bottom you have the uh, USB connector for uh, programming, the uh, power switch, and uh, this wire is, uh, I'm assuming, the antenna for uh, 401 megahertz, which is uh, what frequency range this particular sound is in. So uh, when I snatch this out of the tree, I uh, hold the button down to turn it off. So right now I'm going to hold it down, and then it turns fully on after a few yellow blinks so now it's on and then I'll turn it off by holding it back down and that turns it off there we go alright and then uh, the top side uh, on this uh, silver piece of uh, flexible PCB material is the uh, temperature sensor let's get a zoom in close up there there we go. So you got a temperature sensor. This way it keeps it away from the uh, the sound itself. And then this is all held together by uh, a zip tie. And then uh, this uh, length of string. This is what I was able to retrieve out of the tree. The uh, the top of the the balloon envelope itself. I I, could, I couldn't pull it and uh, get the whole thing down. But uh, I guess I got about 20, 25, 30 feet of the uh, the cord and it's just like a, a pretty nice uh, cotton uh, cord and then it just attaches to this, uh, this little 
mast and then uh, that just uh, clips right underneath the uh, the zip tie so now uh, I think it's time to slice this open and uh, get a look at the insides <laughs> I feel like I'm voiding warranties here so I used a, a hobby knife just to slice through the stickers that allowed me to uh, remove the zip tie after cutting that with a pair of little clippers here and then I used the hobby knife uh, to go around the top of this to, uh, to pull it apart. And so now the top is off and uh, here we have uh, the insides. So let's uh, have a look. I think I know why now these don't need to be returned. So let's look at the board. And again, I'll just keep this super high level uh, pretty clear. There's a high precision uh, U-Blox GPS receiver. Uh, the uh, the main uh, CPU here. So take a look at that. Get it in focus. Uh, I should probably hold it the other way. There we go. So no real surprising things here. An STM32, a GPS. There's the uh, antenna connector, crystal oscillator, all the usual things that you'd expect. Here's the uh, the I/O. So um, let's get a, a close up of that. Woo! So it just connects right into uh, a little connector there. And then the flip side, you got a pair of. Uh, what looks to be CR123 batteries. Let's see, are these rechargeable? No. These are single. These are single use. So you got a pair of CR123 batteries. I'm sure these are bought in bulk from the government. So I don't. I've never come across a Ramway battery, but I'm sure these are uh, pretty good. And uh, yeah, so you got two of them on here. I guess they uh, pop some fresh batteries in here, put the stickers on, and then uh, program things up, and that's uh, about it. So that's the inside. And again, here's the uh, the styrofoam. So pretty basic, but very advanced and low cost at the same time.